Hey folks, today's video is brought to you by the kind people at CarZing who are out there to try and really improve your car buying experience. Because getting a new car could be amazing, but the actual act of shopping for a new car can suck. It can be a time waste, it can be expensive, and it can be stressful. That's where CarZing comes in handy. They can help you search nationally hundreds of thousands of cars, new, used, whatever you want. On. Then they can help you get your financing pre-sorted. Not only will CarZing's finance pre-approval process not affect your credit score, but you can personalize the terms of your finance from the comfort of your own home. Then when it comes time to actually get the car, you've saved time by not having to sit through all that at the dealership. Your time is valuable and time means money. So head over to CarZing.com slash the smoking tire and you could save time, save money, and most importantly, save stress when it comes to buying a new car. Hit the link in the description and thank you to CarZing for sponsoring today's video. Hey folks, welcome to a beautiful canyon morning. My pal Kristen Lee, deputy editor at The Drive, is debuting her new hairstyle. I am. Uh, I shaped it. <laughs> I, I, am, I, was, I had to drop in on it. No, I, it's fine. Because I love it. I really like that, that. It's there to be commented It's coming on. back. It is. I, I have part of that hairstyle here and also, you know, everywhere. The Subaru BRZ is uh, the Subaru version of the 86 like it always was. In fact... Honestly, except for the badges, and uh, if you were, didn't have these cars like right next to each other, it's pretty hard to tell the difference. It's the same car. I'm basically. still struggling to think of the business case between one or the other. They share development costs. Okay. I think. I, th I just think that's that's it. They share even, development. Toyota is like one of the richest automakers in the world. Yeah, the economics. I'm not sure. They can't build sports cars though. No they sports cars. No sports cars without oh, but, help of but, BMW and Subaru. But hydrogen cars, hybrid cars, we got yes, tons of money right, for that. Right, right, The Mirai, that makes sense. One <laughs> state. Keep Sell it in one money state. into that project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the BRZ, this is the limited version. So on my 86 review on track, I drove the base model with the crappy tires. The limited version of the, of the BRZ has uh, some nice leather, uh, some ultra suede, some red stitching, and the 18 inch Michelin uh, Pilot Sport 4 uh, summer tires. Same engine, 2.4 liter, boxer engine, uh, 228 horsepower, 184 pound feet. That's 15% more torque than the older engine. More importantly, peak torque comes down in this new car from over 5,000 RPM to 3,700, meaning it's below that torque dip, which is still there, but it's much, much smaller because the peak torque is underneath it. Uh, it weighs 2,835 pounds. Uh, there's a 50% increase in torsional stiffness from the last car. The center of gravity has been lowered even further than the last car. And if you look at the engine, it's like low, really low. Um, and that's amazing. You've got a five mode uh, traction control and, uh, and sport mode setting, uh, vehicle stability control and traction control setting. In fact, we're gonna go to track. Mm. Because, and it, look, it changes the gauge cluster. Oh, nice. Yeah, the gauge cluster can mess you up too because look, zero to four is there and then four to seven is this big spread. So it kind of looks like you might stall it when you're at like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so that's an interesting uh, thing, but you gotta get used to a non-linear, linear tachometer, <laughs> right? Eight inch touchscreen with uh, CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, the tire pressure monitoring system has, has settings for two sets of wheels and tires. So you can swap out the wheels to your track wheels or to your snow wheels and use TPMS and not get errors. That's cool. Hill start assist, the limited mode has the steering sensitive headlights. They turn oh, when you that's turn. Good. I that's good. That's good. We always drive cars during the day on this show, and I never talk about things like headlights. Like we just never mention it because it's daytime. Um, zero to sixty with the manual, six point one seconds. Six point six seconds with the six-speed paddle shifted auto. All for thirty-one thousand five hundred dollars. This is an affordable sports car. It is. I have a question. Is yes. it still the Asin? Uh, the gearbox the is the same, so thought, but yeah. they have re. Uh, they've reprogrammed, not programmed, they've changed a few things so that the shifter feel is more direct mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it works. It is a nice feeling quality shifter. So, I always like the shifters and the shift action in these cars. I didn't hate the last one, Solid. but they thought it, it needed improving and so they've improved it. Okay. Here we go. So, 
my first thought is that it actually sounds very pleasant. And it sounded very pleasant on the track. It sounds very pleasant on the street. I thought the sound was one of the weaker points of the last one, but it sounds good now. There's plenty of good induction noise. There is good induction noise. And it's not that typical four-cylinder drony thing that you get from a lot of Hondas, I think. Don't you dare crap on my Honda four-cylinders. Honda makes you an excellent four-cylinder. Drone, drone a little bit. That's all. The engines are good, but they're just a little... One thing I love about this engine is how happy it is to rev uh, on the track at Monticello in the Toyota. I was between six and 7,500 all day, as was everybody else. And these engines really, really will take it. They don't get hot. They love taking an abuse. And they're perfectly happy revving all the way to the red line. No mode. I it's like, just I like this. That. I'm tired of modes. We don't need a mode. I don't this. need mode. Easy to heel toe, but easier the faster that you go. Like it's actually harder to match revs properly when I'm going like slower in the city and just kind of puttering around than when I'm going quick. Giving it an aggressive boot is something it likes. Sorry about the things in the trunk. You may hear them from time to time. Think about like Dumb and Dumber, those dogs back there, that's what we've got going on. But it's just a pelican case, a man yeah. purse, and an actual And purse. some avion. Um, the balance, right? You can really tell how low the center of gravity is here. It's just so planted. And even with the crappy tires, when you start sliding it around the limit of traction, it's not rolling sloppily. It's low and moving like this. So when you add the grip of the Michelins, so planted. It's very un Miata in that sense. Right, the Miata rolls more. Yeah. Yeah. And that can be fun. Like, you can use that to make it handle well, but this is just a little different in its uh, approach. Now, we're going to put the windows down for a second. Mind your hair, because this is the tunnel. So we'll hear, we'll, we'll do what it sounds like in the tunnel. Yeah. So we'll do second gear from four. Okay. All right. We'll see what, what the echoes and the resonance is. I think that's a very pleasant I sound. I like it. It sounds very sporty. And you do get, uh, because you have a digital gauge cluster, you get built-in shift lights. So it kind of flashes at you when you approach Redline. Now this minivan here, this may be a problem. I'm going to do the old flashy flash. Uh, on the interior, while we're going slow, if this person doesn't want to uh, let me by, this steering wheel... It's leather wrapped, mm -hmm. but is it me or is it a little small? I like small steering wheels. Well, you're a small person. I guess so. My arms don't need to go very wide. <laughs> well, Maybe I think there's a happy... arms just sit wider. <laughs> I've got big gorilla arms. There's a happy <laughs> medium. I feel like this steering wheel is a little small. I feel like the rim is a little thin. I liked the old, the first, first BRZ steering wheel better, but that notwithstanding, it is very direct. Also on the interior, something I'm not into, they got rid of the knee pads. Ah. Do you remember the knee pads? Uh, yes. I, as you were going through, I was like, mm, a uh -huh. little bit. Could use a little more. So you could there. use a little more bolstering. I maybe could use a little, I'm going to let this van go because I don't want to sit behind him. I could use a little less bolstering uh, because I've got some heavy, uh, we're like the extreme size <laughs> examples, These right? These are the two, right. I think, polar people that right. should be measuring. And also there's no adjustable lumbar. No. And so, having driven this car for a couple of hours at a time now, I really like my kingdom for an adjustable lumbar in this seat. Because otherwise, I think it's a really well-constructed seat. I think there's good support in the ass and in the back, in the just in the lower back. It could be a, a little, little, a little more, a right? Little a little bit. more of that. Because it's collapse. Mine's collapsing. A little yeah, bit, I feel it. That and the fact that they, they, the first gen had no knee pads. In the in the in the in the mid cycle refresh, they put knee pads here because people were getting their knees bruised. And now in the refresh, in the next one, there's no knee pads again. And after the track day on the eighty six, dude, I had bruises. I had bruises so bad on both my knees. And I was I've like, never heard of that happening to anyone. That's really? Very funny. Is it no. just a knee problem? Maybe it is. I've I've, other never people complained heard. about it. They put knee pads in. Yeah, I mean, clearly other people heard of it, but I just never occurred to me well if you're small maybe or you don't I'm need smaller, to brace your knees it. yeah so like I'm, this is me right here with my knees uh 
And so that's, look, I can even press, I move, move the door panel. So I, This is uncomfortable if I do that. <laughs> it's suggestive is it's what it is if suggestive. you do it. All right. I really like the gearing in the car. Second is good for 60 exactly. You can do zero to 60 exactly in, in first and second. Third is good for 84. That's nice gearing. I like that's that. Good yeah, good that's canyon good for, gear. Yeah, that's your power gear. Just leave it at third. And uh, on the track at Monticello, it was mostly third and fourth, which is good. It's right in line. Right. We're gonna go up uh, the Quickie Road. I'm still stuck on the steering wheel thing because the Lotus has a tidy steering wheel. The Lotus does have perfect. a tidy steering wheel. Oh, this little magnesium here? thing. Uh, Lotus does have a little wheel. In that car, it, it really makes sense to me because you've got like almost formula car like steering. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, it's just a me thing. It's all about being really, really planted with this car. Like, I really feel like even though you don't have Porsche horsepower, I feel like the cornering speeds are on the level of like a box car. I drive a lot of these things. We have more fun in cars like this than cars with 800 horsepower. I do. Everyone knows this. I don't know. The supercars now, 800 horsepower, 850, 900. What, what are you going to do with it? Those are a ride. Don't get me wrong. They're exciting yeah. in their own way, but I have no desire to own one. Whereas this car has a really great balance of power, momentum, engagement with the controls, uh, flexibility, and also, like, not slow. It's nope. not slow. Nope. Uh, in fact, it's delightfully quick. And I think that on a, on a racetrack, this thing is probably as quick as, like, an E36 M3. That's an interesting comparison. I think it probably is, because yeah. the power to weight, uh, the E36 M3, let me see if the construction is here. E36 M3 is a little more torque from the six cylinder, but it also weighs more. Mm -hmm. um, this thing with 228 horsepower, and I'm talking US spec people, I'm not talking about the Euro spec with the motor we didn't get. Um, horsepower to weight, this is right there. Invariably, there are going to be people in the comments being like, I don't care about it, it needs to be turbocharged. What would you say to those people? I would say that turbocharging would add weight, mm -hmm. it would add complexity, mm -hmm. it would add heat, and it doesn't need it, actually. I think this... I don't think it needs it. The, the power feels super linear. Yeah. And it would be a single turbo setup. Yeah. It doesn't need it. I think if you really, really wanted more power, a Rotrex-style supercharger Ooh. would do it. And I drove a first-gen car with a Rotrex in it, and it was really, really fast. But I think you can get a lot of performance out of this car exactly the way it is. And if you really want to increase your performance in a modest way, you could upgrade the brakes and you could have a higher quality shock. Like this shock is sort of like the universal suspension tube. It's good for every day, it's good for bumpy roads, it's good for the canyons, it's fine on the track, but you could narrow the focus of your suspension and narrow the focus of your braking power and you could probably cut a second to two off your lap times without adding any power. I'm a fan of taking away weight. Yeah. I wouldn't want to take away weight. You don't think it needs it, less weight? At the expense of refinement. Like, oh. I don't want it to be noisier. You know, I think I... It feels really light on its feet. This thing is whipping. <laughs> oh, it feels like it's dancing. It's fun. I really like how short and direct the shifter is. Never miss a shift in this thing. And the gates are well-defined. They are. It's very good. That's one thing I didn't like in the current WRX is the gates are so close together. Uh huh. I would always miss shift third and fifth. The w current WRX shifter is a little bushy. That too. Yeah. This is super super notchy. Really like it. This is a very very fun car. I was worried that like having only driven on the track before that at like medium pace, canyon pace, and not racetrack pace, that it might somehow be less fun because you're crossing the torque dip, but it 
it's not. It's brilliant. Really, really good. What is nice about it is there isn't much lean in these corners. It's right. more directional change. Nose directional change. The steering is really sharp. Yeah. They should build a Lotus version of this, right? I mean, yeah, I would never say no to more Lotuses. Like if this, if they could, they could take this platform and turn it into like a Lotus Elon. That would be super kick-ass, wouldn't it? I really fun. Can't wait to see this get turned into a drift car. Oh yeah, they're already doing it. They're gonna do it. But they're putting two JZs and stuff in them. Yeah. They got it. They're swapping they out the engines. But like the old car, it was light. It was fun. It was entry level. But we used to kind of make excuses for the ultimate performance like yeah it's slow but this car does not feel like that so it doesn't need those asterisks no i, I the only asterisk is the dumb knee pads <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't need any asterisk on the powertrain or the engagement level or the speed for thirty thousand dollars th this might be on a racetrack the fastest car you could buy for thirty thousand dollars i mean I think I could carry as much speed around the track as I could in a Veloster N, which has more power, and a turbo, or a WRX, which has all-wheel drive. Like, this thing rips. Properly rips. Someone brought up that it could be similar to the EcoBoost Mustang with the high-performance pack. But after riding in this hill, the Mustang is so much bigger. It's so much bigger. The center of gravity is so much higher. It rolls a lot more. Yeah, and, and that engine... It's like, a good engine. I like it. Objectively, it's good, but I've driven them on track before, and they really die at the top. It's a torque motor, mm -hmm. and it's got a nice mid-range, but once you rev it past, like, 5,500, it's got nothing anymore, even with a tune. This pulls to 7,500 and is perfectly happy to stay above 6 mm -hmm. all day, making that power... And that's something I really like about this engine. Like, you can just be flat to the floor at the top of the rev range just all day long. It's brilliant. I miss that about natural aspiration. That's kind of the other thing, too. Like, naturally aspirated, manual transmission, like, lightweight, low center of gravity. Like, this car is an evolution, uh, not, not a revolution. But it does, it, it took what the other old car did well and it makes it do those things even better. Yeah. And that's what I really love about it. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for joining me on this video. Oh, I'm course. not going to relegate you entirely to passenger seat. You get to drive now. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I'm not okay. going to pressure you into driving on camera. Just for fun. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, no, just for fun. Do I have fun. to do it for them? No, no, just for fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I'm not going to... You're, you're not a right seat person. You're a okay. driver. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But thank you for joining me on this video. Aww. We Thanks have like a handshake. Easy. Like official. Mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I love your new hair. <laughs> Thank you. Kristen Lee, uh, deputy editor at The Drive. Go read her work and the work of her underlings. Uh, from oh my the underlings? Underlings no, from the East Coast. Yes. My Rocking uh, my, one of my dope watch people with her Seamaster. Always, always repping the watch game on our show. Thank you to Subaru for letting us have a go uh, this week. I really do enjoy this car. This is, I mean, this is 30000 bucks well spent. 100%. Absolutely. 100%. You can spend that and not even look back about it. It's a fabulous car. I mean, to get, and, and because it's, you know, full, big, nice warranty and a car you can hammer the snot out of under warranty. Mm, and that's it's a Toyota good. engine. It's a Subaru engine. It's a Subaru en Toyota design. That's what it is. It's a Subaru engine. Toyo Boxer. Boxer. Boxer engine. Yeah, yeah. It's a Subaru engine. Subaru Cut engine. Cut that part. Okay. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.